Hey everybody, Evan here. So I wanted to do um, a series of videos on view components um, because it's something we haven't talked about yet and it's something that I think is extremely important to get into while we're still working with view via the CDN before we get to a, a more professional production workflow. Because we can. It's very easy to do with just the CDN and to understand how they work and what's going on. Alright, so to get started, I'm just going to go ahead and set up a standard boilerplate here, div with an ID of app, which is going to be the HTML element inside of which all of our view logic will run. So everything that I want to use view will be inside this div with the ID of app. And I'm going to need to create my view instance here in my JavaScript. And I'm going to define the element in which this instance will be active with that L property. I'm going to set up my data object and I'm going to set up my methods object. All right, this is all that we need to start using view directives inside the div with the ID of app. So just to demonstrate really quickly, I'll throw down an H1 use some um, mustache syntax to show some dynamic property called message and we will declare that property inside our data object and have it contain the string hello world I am a message and when I reload my page I have an error so that's a period not a comma here we go. <clears throat> okay, so our instance is working. View directives, two-way data binding, interpolation. This is all going to work now, um, which means we can start creating and using view components. Uh, so this is the master view instance, and we're going to start creating some components. Now to create a view component is very, very simple. You want to do this above your master view instance. And all you're going to do is view dot component parentheses. And inside these parentheses are going to be two arguments. The first one is going to be a string, which will represent the name of your component. So I'm just going to call this one my component and then the second argument is going to be an object and this object will be very similar to our view instance object a quick note on the names for your components this is one place where you don't want a camel case okay so if you have multiple words you're going to want to fall back on hyphens kind of like this or, or you could just do all one word and forego camel casing altogether. No spaces, but um, camel casing is not going to help you here. So, just to put that out there. Okay, so in this way we've created a new component called my component. Now, that's not going to really do anything because it's completely empty. But inside this component, inside this object, which is the second argument of this method here, let's create a property called template. And inside template, we want a string. When you create the string, I would encourage you to use the back ticks rather than the standard quotes or double quotes. And that's because these back ticks, if you recall, allow you to create multi-line strings, which is very useful, especially for what we're going to be doing inside this template. So create a string with those back, back ticks, and let's open it up a little bit, maybe too far. And inside this string, I'm going to create a div. And inside this div, I'm going to create a paragraph that says this is my component I'm 
Let's also throw an image in there for good measure. I'll use my picture. Image source equals, once again, you have to imagine that this image element is in your HTML. Okay, and let's see, do I bootstrap? I do have bootstrap, so I'm gonna take advantage of bootstrap and I'm gonna give this image a class of image fluid. And I'm gonna give this div class of, let's go with, column four. All right, and just to make sure that my bootstrap stylings are gonna work, let's create a container. And inside the container, let's create a row. All right, and inside this row is where we're going to place these new components so that those, those columns those column classes will work, that bootstrap grid system will work. All right, so this is what we have. We have a paragraph and an image inside a columned div. And that's what's contained in the template property of the object, which is the second argument of this my component component. So let's start using it. I'm gonna jump into HTML and here inside this row, I am going to create a my component element. Let's reload my page. Here's my component. We see the paragraph, we see the image. We've now created a custom HTML element which when it renders on your page will render as whatever you put inside this template element, uh, template property, excuse me, this string. Anything in this string will get interpreted as HTML. So you could write a whole web page in here if you wanted. With one line of code, one new custom named component, a named element, we can generate however many lines of HTML that we want. And our actual HTML source code is nice and clean. Look at how clean this is. Even more astounding though is that we can reuse this component very easily as many times as we want. And it will generate, it will render that code wherever the browser reads a my component element. <clears throat> okay, so this is how components work. What I would encourage you to do is stop here for at least a couple minutes and practice creating some components of your own. Create them and render them create some different ones. See if you can find any limitations to what you can put inside this template fold, uh, template property. Try it out, okay? Remember the pattern is view.component, then the name of your component as a string, followed by an object which contains a template property. That is the pattern, okay? And I will explain a little bit more about this object after you've had a chance to try this out. So once again, try making some components of your own and rendering them. Pause the video and do it now. All right, <clears throat> hopefully you gave it your best. Hopefully you gave it a shot. Um, I would be curious to know if you encountered any limitations or any errors in working with a component. So for example, maybe I want to double the amount of content inside this my component component. I want it to generate two divs, both with column four. Okay, I'm gonna save, reload my page.
Let me get rid of all but one of these. Still not doing it. So that's kind of a limitation, isn't it? Let's see if we can investigate that further. Let's get rid of all of the divs and just include paragraph image, paragraph image. Okay, so none of the encasing elements. Now, the only thing that generates is that very first element. The only thing that's rendering is that very first element. So what does that tell you about how these templates work? or how this template property works. What it comes down to is the template property itself can only contain one child element, if you will. In other words, if you want to generate 100 lines of HTML, that's all well and good. You can do that in a template property like this, but all of that needs to be contained inside one div or one section or one main or one header whatever your your encasing element is going to be there needs to be only one if you think of the template as an element itself it needs to have only one child as many things can go inside that child as you would like like so but it will only render one element, one div, one section, one whatever it is. Okay, so that is a quirk that you're going to need to get familiar with if you intend to use components.